I just want to say thank you to everybody for coming. It uh, means way, 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 way more than you guys know. Today, like I said, it's rehearsal. Um, and I just want to create an atmosphere where we take the pressure off the platform and we show where the strength of the platform comes from. And that's in rehearsal. How we dig, how we practice, how we craft our craft, how we sharpen our craft.
one of the one of my goals for doing this in doing this one of my goals in doing this was to make sure that I was very selective in who came here. And I believe that um, this rehearsal is made up of God's next. standard of sound sitting in the chairs of this room TJ you're included and I believe that every definitely every singer here right here is marked with the sound of the remnant believe that it's things like this um, that is a launching pad for authenticity in worship and I believe because the people in this room there's no there's no show to your worship not a speck there's no performance to your worship not a speck So Father, I thank you. I pause Yahweh. And I say thank you for the generals you have in this room. And I thank you for where everyone is right now in their life, Father. Thank you for that. I give you praise for wherever everybody is. Because as much as we wait for you or wait for things or wait for seasons, I believe that everybody's here. Everybody here is right on time, right on schedule, flaws and all. So I want to pause this and thank you for the people here. And I pray, Father. you build up their most holy and righteous and strong faith for the road that's to come for the road of service and stewardship to come Father I pray covering over these people here Just pause for a moment. You've done so much, Yahweh. Bye-bye. So we pause and thank you. We pause and thank you. We thank you, Yahweh. Chiamamanda Lebaco Ramanda. Si 
As we go on, Father, I've learned that it works better if you are our everything, Father, not our spouse, not our children, not where we serve, not our parents, not our spiritual parents, but you are ever, you have to be everything.
everything. Give you everything. Come on. Give you everything. Hey. Give you everything. I hold nothing back from you. Oh my, my, my. I'll give you my pillow. Time. You are, you are everything, yeah. You are everything, you are everything, it's good. You are everything. Yes, sir. Okay, let's take five. Walking into the room and seeing rehearsal come alive for me was surreal. I was having a hard time, like, you know, staying open enough to, you know, not get too moved by, like, the hiccups and, like, the unexpected things and, but, you know, staying open but then staying present at the same time and Leading the pack at the same time. It was it was surreal to say the least. But dope, beautiful. Like, you know, seeing my my baby grow up right before my eyes and an idea that I only saw in my head. Now I can see with my actual eyes. So, you know, using faith up. I feel like I started to see it from the very germinal stages of just like the spark of the idea. And then just to see how he pressed to you know, reach up to God for resources and just trust that if God gave him this vision, it, it would come to pass and not losing hope in that, even when things like seemed very, I don't know, is this gonna happen? Like, can this happen? Will this happen? It was really inspiring to me. And I think just getting to this point of the process now, I'm unbelievably proud. Watching someone receive a seed, plant it in the ground, and then to literally watch it grow in its infant stages or various stages, it's, it is something I've never experienced before. So it's honestly um, a teaching moment for me about how to handle that seed planting stage. But it was also um, breathtaking to watch him walk into what God gave him in a room, you know what I mean? And to see that vision come to life, I'm more than proud, you know? Um, not only because he's my brother, but because he's so needed. Um, his sound is needed, his, his lyrical accuracy is needed, his relationship with the father is needed. Um, and it, I, can't, I can't say it enough, his sound, you know? And so to watch that sound and to hear that sound and even be a part of that sound was indescribable. When, you know, I was new to fatherhood and there was just a, you know, a lot on my mind and on my plate at the time, but I remember seeing rehearsal. It came to me one day and I couldn't unsee it. I couldn't unsee it. And creating safe spaces is kind of one of my, my things. I'm a family guy. So even with friends, you know, they're family. So when we get together, like I'm the guy who wants to make sure everybody has fun and all of that kind of stuff. And rehearsal is that space for creatives, you know, to be able to get in where they fit in because they actually fit. Um, this, was my, this was my rehearsal pitch for like the people who were a part. You know, 
you know, you know that that song that you have, and you know it's gonna go well, whether it's for like a worship night or a concert, or a album live recording or whatever, or a set of songs, and you just know they're gonna go, like they're gonna do well, and you rehearse them, and like something happens in rehearsal, you know, you do the song, and you know, it's just no pressure. So it goes, but then you do it the night of the worship night or whatever it is, and it goes, but it never goes quite like rehearsal. So I wanted to document what goes on in rehearsal. No audience, no lights, I mean cameras of course, cause it's gotta be documented, but no like, you know, no pressure. I wanted to document the no pressure zone of what we do. With all my soul, I will trust in the name of the Lord. For sure. I will sing about my heart. I will trust in the name of the Lord. With all my soul. Yes. What? What's the first harmony? What's the word? So. I. I. Okay. I will trust. I will trust in the name of the Lord. I will trust in the. Yeah. And just let's make let's make it. I will trust in the name of the Lord. I will trust in the name of the Lord. I mean, rehearsal is not a place where you worry about perfection. It, you worry about, you know, um, you focus more on the anointing more than the perfection of a thing. And so, you know, it was, it was free enough to allow everybody to feel that they could bring themselves to the table. And so that's what I love the most. Because again, I'm an introvert. And so if I don't feel like I can bring myself, I'm mentally out, socially out, you know, um, especially musically out, you know. Um, so yeah, I think the fact that we all felt welcomed enough to bring ourselves to the rehearsal in whatever capacity, you know, it was that day, I think that was the best part. What made me want to shed light on rehearsal, um, I've had multiple experiences in multiple rehearsals where because we do what we do, Genuinely, we actually love the Father. We don't do it for claps. We don't sing for people. You know, we're called to this. So, you know, we're not just anointed on stage, we're anointed in rehearsal. And um, I've been in rehearsals where, you know, we're rehearsing the song. And because we love the Father, you know, depending on what we're singing, it just gets real, because this is real life for us. <clears throat> and the rehearsal completely takes a turn, completely took. I remember I was at a church and almost every single rehearsal turned into prayer or deliverance or just soaking and just sitting in God's presence. And we completely forgot about the songs that we came to rehearse because of the God that showed up in the room. But I love prophetic moments, and so watching everybody get what they needed, whether it was through Tim, through somebody else in the group, um, coming together collectively, I loved watching everybody, one, go for themselves, two, surround one another in a moment of need for whatever the need was, um, allowing, God, allowing God to speak and just, I know we made room for him, but we made room for him, if that makes sense. Um, so watching that and being a part of that, I think that was my favorite part. I feel like it's really easy to get caught up in the Sunday church experience, the lights, the fits, the perfect sound, the transitions, the time constraints. Time constraints. And I feel like 
rehearsal is needed because one, for those who are actively a part of it, um, like I feel like your heart is already expressed, like it releases pressure. Like you don't have to have every hair in place. You know, your makeup doesn't, ha you don't have to go into the bathroom between um, what are the called? services and like touch up your makeup or anything like that. Like you can be you and mm -hmm. you can be you unashamedly. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, and I hope and I pray that it inspires people to kind of release a little bit. For sure. There's a lot of stuff that can happen when you just be and be not just with other believers, but be in the presence and actively, you know, engaging with the presence. And I feel like for the listener, I hope that, you know, it inspires them on a Sunday morning to dig deep. Even even if, you know, the Sunday worship set is 20 minutes. For sure. You can get, you can get there. There can be a lot of pressures of platform if you let it be. First and foremost, if you're the worship leader or the lead worshiper, the multitasking that that takes, you know, even, you know, being a lead worshiper at your church, you know, keeping your eyes on the pastor, remembering words, yeah, you know, some people have an MD, some people don't, but like, you know, being connected to the band and being connected to the singers and giving them direction and the band direction. And if you flow and, you know, you got to on the spot, tell the band and show the band what you're doing and the singers, but keep watch of time. And if you travel, you know, keeping, you know, in mind how certain churches function. So can you speak in tongues in the mic or sing in tongues or is it a flow thing? Do you have time to flow? Do you have a 20 minute set? A lot of times I think when you're on the platform, it's almost like I need to know everything. And in rehearsal, not only are you figuring it out and finding your, finding your rhythm and finding your pace, but you're also relying on what you don't know you know, and, and making room for that and, and exploring that. You don't necessarily have all the room to explore on the platform as you do in rehearsal. And so it, it gives you moments to kind of mess up in peace, you know what I mean? And, and to find your footing um, without all the pressures of, did you hear that she messed up? Well, she don't know where she's going. What's the next song? There are a lot of aspects that can become pressure, but in rehearsal, Nobody cares, like, you know, it's just us, you know, and it's just, you know, it feels like just a group of people coming together just to rehearse some songs and it just turns into, you know, the good stuff. Yeah. 
promises just continue. I feel like promises will always be one that just rings true to like whatever season of life I find myself in. Um, just because I feel like there's always going to be um, a reason to remember. Mm. A reason to remember, you know, God. And it, I mean, it ties into Yahweh the same. For sure. But, you know those moments in my life where like God marks himself as a banner or like it's a banner year or you know times in my life where like I can place an altar there and say like God was a insert here for me in this season Right now in the space that I'm in, I'm kind of in like a faith season, you know, where I have what God gave me, I have instruction, um, and then I have faith. And the rest is literally just trusting that whatever he said is going to come to pass and that he's, he's going to take care of me and that um, I don't necessarily have to look for a foundation in other things and other people and other places, but that I can solely put my trust in him and be okay. And, you know, not look for a plan B. So, you know, I think that that, that really hit home right there. Most, most of my inspiration for the songs that I write, honestly speaking, if I'm being completely honest, life, I'll go through something or I'll come out on the other side of a storm or a situation and something will just drop on me. Um, either that or I'll get inspired by um, listening to like another song, like other kinds of music, like world music, like Irish music, like folk music, West African music, South African music. Um, I get very, very, very inspired by that. So, you know, I'll take maybe a line that I hear or like a melody that I hear or a scripture that I read or like a, a tweetable comment that was made in a conversation that I had and just make it a thing and I just build around it. First of all, okay. Okay. That band? <laughs> Completely cute. It was, it was crazy. My strategy for the band, even the singers, even visual uh, and even audio, my strategy is a couple of things. My ears, I use my ears in advance. So even like when I like write music, I write the song in a place that just comes up in my mind. So if it's a church or a concert or a rehearsal space. I put myself in that space and I hear the music, I hear the band, I hear the chords, I hear the singers. So that's what I did for rehearsal. I figured out what kind of blend I wanted, what kind of vibe I wanted. So I just kind of picked people who fit the vibe, um, who are people who are really, really, really good at what they do but then have amazing spirits. And by that, I mean, you know, they're just good people. You know what I mean? Very down to earth, family oriented. And I feel like, you know, that helps with the chemistry. Most of the people at rehearsal um, have never sang or played together. So we were doing things on the spot. So, you know, using strategy uh, to bring t people together that knows what they're doing, like their craft is their craft. Um, but then, you know, being really, really cool people. So like, you know, up top, there's chemistry, musical chemistry, personal chemistry, you know, laughing and talking and joking. And I feel like that just like, you know, brings to light the essence of rehearsal. I love the fact that even though for some of us, it was our first time meeting, that family feeling was not absent. You know, it was like, 
it, and even if you didn't get a personal interaction with everybody that was there, the family feeling, the family interaction, you know, amongst all of us, it was just ever present, you know? And um, it felt honestly like what we call a, um, a kickback, where it's just friends, you know, that just happened to sing, happened to have gifts, coming together, having a good time. And uh, it was that from beginning to end. Having my family on this journey is something that I, I kind of always really, really wanted. I've always heard the greats say, you know, they wish they spent more time with their children and with their family, but they were working or on the road, or I feel like that's a, a like a normal father's thing. They're just away, you know, winning the bread and bringing home bacon. But having my family with me while I work and we're just all working together, it's a dream come true. That's what I've always wanted. And that's what's happening. <laughs> Tim, I am so proud of you, brother. Um, you literally teach me more than you think you do. You show me more than you think you do. Um, and it is not only an honor to be your sister for real, but it's an honor to help you bring what God gave you to life. And, you know, to watch it blossom and to watch it bless others and to also be blessed by it. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, get, get ready for rehearsals because we come in and we coming strong. Be inspired. Let this spark something in you. Like, really allow yourself to say like, wow. I feel like the things that are dormant inside of me are starting to wake up because now I see someone actually like pushing and pressing and doing something that just came up in their mind. Like there was, there's no blueprint for this. Like Tim, this was literally downloaded and Tim just had to trust that the things that were in his heart and in his mind and things that he was starting to see, like he just had to trust that it could be done and it happened because he allowed himself to dream. As you dream, community is important. Mm. Relationship is important. For sure. This could not have been no. done without relationship. For sure. It could not have been done without community and people really investing. So find your tribe, you know, like a little tangent, but Elephants are some of the biggest, most majestic animals on this planet. When an elephant is about to give birth, most animals kind of go off by themselves and give birth to whatever, mm. not elephants. When an elephant gives birth, the whole herd surrounds them mm. as they are birthing this new elephant. And so I think that when you have something inside of you that is ready to be birthed, you need community around sure. you sure. to help push that thing out and make it come to fruition. The future for at rehearsal. I feel like the future for rehearsal is what you see now just getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and more people, you know, joining the rehearsal family. So even if it's not, you know, doing it with us, <clears throat> just having more spaces and I hope it encourages people to have more spaces where, you know, you can prepare for the platform or, you know, just have worship spaces where there is no pressure. That's just my thing. That's my thing. I just want, you know, rehearsal to become a place for anybody to learn, grow, sharpen their craft, get, get, get better at what they do, but do it in the spirit of worship. Like it's a thing. They merge together. Excellence and presence. All in one space. Come on, clap those hands in here tonight. Come on, put those hands together. Yeah. Oh, we got away the same yesterday, day forever. Oh, oh, oh. He's our way. Same yesterday, day forever. 
Come on.
yesterday and if forever more But I don't think I'll wait the same Trust in Yahweh. Yahweh the same yesterday and forever. He's not a man that he should lie. Yahweh the same yesterday and forever. I can trust you with my trust. Yeah. Yahweh the same yesterday and forever. So last time. You know what's so cool about you? That you are so big, you don't lose track because you don't lie. Every promise you give is a promise you make and complete. And you don't lose track of which promise belongs to who. You set it up and it happens. You speak it and it happens. And there's only one that can do it. So we thank you for being that holy one. 
the one who's in control at all times. Nothing passes you by. You're blindsided by nothing. You know all and you see all. You are the only one we know in part. We see in part and prophesy in part. But you are the only one. The Holy One. Who was and is. And is to come. forward to you and we are standing on leaning on them waiting on them praying for them in anticipation for them all of the promises of this God
talk about our God now. And there's only one of Him. There's only one Jehovah.
there is only one There's only one Come on The Holy One Who was and is